of town where the grickle grass grows and the wind smells slow and sour when it blows and no birds ever sing excepting old crows is the street of the lifted lorax grickle grass grickle grass street of the lifted lorax grickle grass grickle grass Somebody lifted the Lorax away. What was the Lorax? And why was it there? And why was it lifted and taken somewhere from the far end of town where the grickle grass grows? The old Wunseler still lives here. Ask him. He knows. You won't see the Wunseler. Don't knock at his door. He lurks in his lurkim on top of his store. And on grickly midnights in August, he peeks out of the shutters, and sometimes he speaks and tells how the Lorax was lifted away. It all started way back, such a long, long time back, way back in the days when the grass was still green, and the pond was still wet, and the clouds were still clean, and the song of the Swami Swans rang out in space. One morning, I came to this glorious place. Then I saw the trees, the truffula trees, the bright-colored tufts of the truffula trees, mile after mile in the fresh morning breeze. And under the trees, I saw brown barbaloots frisking about in their barbaloot suits. Under the trees, happy daffy barbaloots, under the trees, in our barbaloot suits. Under the trees, eating truffula fruits, fully succulent, deliciously, deliciously, sweetly succulent, truffula fruits. Sometimes they're coming, coming, under the trees, hum and fish are humming, humming, under the trees, under the trees. Oh, this glorious, glendulous, glendorious, glendulous, dandy, flandy, flendulous, truffula trees. Those trees, those trees, those truffula trees. All my life I've been searching for trees such as these. The touch of their tufts was much softer than silk, and they had the sweet smell of fresh butterfly milk. I felt a great leaping of love in my heart. I knew just what I'd do. I unloaded my car. In no time at all, I had built a small shop. Then I chopped down a truffula tree with one chop. What you doing in my tree stump, buddy? Your tree stump? Your tree stump? Mister, I am the Lorax. I speak for the... Forget it. I don't really need the stump. You can have it, little fellow. Finish the cuffs. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Now, uh, uh, who'd you say you were, little fella? Mister, I am the Lorax. I speak for the trees. I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues. And I'm asking you, sir, at the top of my lungs, that that thing, that horrible thing that I see, what's that thing you've made out of my truffula tree? Look, Lorax, calm down. There's no cause for alarm. I chopped down just one tree. I'm doing no harm. <laughs> this thing is most useful. This thing is a need, a need, a find something that all people need. It's a shirt. It's a sock. It's a glove. It's a hat. 
but, but it has other uses. Yes, far beyond that, you can use it for carpets, for pillows, for sheets, or curtains, or covers for bicycle seats. Sir, you're crazy. You're crazy with greed. Well, there's no one on earth who would buy that fool's need. The birth of an industry, you poor stupid guy. You telling me what the public will buy? Please, I object in the name of the trees. All complaints will be filed in this box, if you please. Now I'd reached the stage where the potential was known. This business was too big for one Wunsler alone, so promptly I built me a radiophone. I called my brothers and uncles and aunts, and I said, listen here, here's a wonderful chance for the whole Wunsler family to get mighty rich. Get over here fast, take the road to North Niche, turn left at Weehawk and sharp right at South Stitch.